ipmnation.com. Condolences, I didn't attend your services It's like I felt like it wouldn't be real if I avoided them Then you appeared in this, drew my head, told me you were dead I couldn't deny it then, it f***ed on my head We hadn't spoken so long, I was at fault It was all wrong, I can never make amends We'll never be boys again, there's no going back You always told me that it would end like this I would just laugh, like yeah right Either planned it or predicted it When we wrote last night I don't know what kind of pain you were dealing with That made that sound better than living did You were there for me through thick and thin But where was I? This was something I couldn't prevent But I didn't Roll try Roll up all black This time the vibe's different Same gang, same thing This time the crime's different Seeing you face down Two shots with your spine twitching And honestly when I think about it Got me feeling like my mind's different You would run around town by yourself, dog How could you? Yeah. They caught you without your phone on Now could you? Yeah. You took a couple shots to the dome, dog How could you? Yeah. And you left me all by myself, dog How could you? Well, that is How Could You by Truth, T-R-U-T-H, who joins us now by phone. At least, hopefully, this is him. Truth, is that you? Yeah, it's me, man. How you doing, man? Great. How are you doing, my friend? It's uh, good, to, good to talk to you. We, uh, you know, we've communicated uh, quite a bit on uh, Facebook in the last uh, 24 hours, but it's, it's great to, to, to get to have you on the show. And uh, that is such a, a powerful track and uh let, well here let's actually before we get into that let's uh let's talk about what truth uh stands for because it is an acronym uh what 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 does it mean okay so uh yeah first of all man thank you for having me on the show oh you got uh, it you know much love to everybody out there in new, uh, in new hampshire and manchester um and uh so what truth stands for is it's an acronym for true rhymes uniquely teaching honesty um, that's how anybody finds me. You can look up the uh, truth in all caps as an acronym, or you can look up True Rhymes Neatly Teaching Honesty on on any app that you might use. You guys can find that track right now. It's available for uh, for anybody to stream right now. My bad, I'm a little shook up, man. The, the track is uh, no worries. You know, it brings up a whole lot of emotion. I've been kind of really emotional all morning. Uh, you caught the the live feed that I did last night on Facebook. I did, yeah. And uh, you know, I kind of just been breaking down. 
as I kind of told you earlier, uh, the friend of mine that I was speaking about in the first verse, her birthday is actually February 15th. Mm. And so it kind of always fucks up Valentine's Day for me and, and just in general, like, you know, it's well, emotional. I'm about to just get a gotta, tattoo in honor of her. Truth, uh, ju- truth, just gotta, know? just gotta watch the F word, my friend. We, I, I, I had to hit the dump oh, on yeah, my, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, man. I forgot we were on a. <laughs> that's, that's all right. We're, we're on a delay. I caught it, but yeah, no worries. No worries. Um, yeah, so keep going. I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no, it's all, um, so yeah, man, um, uh, basically, uh, j- just to get like right into it, uh, I, the friend of mine that I was speaking about in the first verse, her name was, uh, we used to call her Tina Bear. You know, her name was, uh, Christina Flores. And, uh, she, she took her own life almost about 10 years ago. It was in, uh, 2009, I believe, okay. or 2010. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, um, the person that I was speaking about in the second verse, his name was Andrew. He's actually one of the reasons why I even do music today. Um, Andrew Vega, we used to call him MC Money. He was on uh, a lot of my first uh, tracks on my demos when we first started to create music and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mm -hmm. he passed away um, from, you know, uh, unfortunately, like he always used to talk about he was going to self-inflict an overdose on himself. And I I wasn't really talking to him at the point in time when he passed. So I don't really know exactly what happened, but I'm imagining, you know, he kind of followed through with that. Wow. Okay. And, um, oh, I, by the way, I want to say, uh, hello to, uh, uh, let's see, we have, uh, NASCAR Nicey. Hi, Nicey. And, uh, Eric Agnan joining us, uh, in the Facebook live chat. Um, so, oh, okay. Now, so, hello, uh, hello. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to get some, uh, <laughs> yeah. We're on my Facebook live too, man. Thanks. Uh, thanks for everybody that's tuning in right now. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everybody. And, uh, so now you're, you're, so you, uh, your, your second friend, it, it sounds like it was, it was an overdose. And the, the, your, your first, your friend in the first verse, what was her name again? Her name was, uh, Christina Flores. Christina, okay. And uh, what? We used to call her Tina Bear. And so, uh, yeah. you know. What, 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 that, what? That's how I refer to her most of the time. But yeah, you know, her name was Christina Flores. Okay. And what, if you don't mind my asking, what, what happened, what happened to her that, that, that led to her, uh, what she did? Um, I mean, I can't necessarily say what, uh, what she was feeling, but she yeah. did reach out. Like I said, in the, in the verse, she reached out to mm. somebody she wasn't really close to that. She knew was an acquaintance of of mine or, yeah. you know, like a good friend of mine that was only an acquaintance of hers Sure, and okay. confided in him. And he reached out and was like, Hey man, like your homegirl is, is really hurting right now. I think you kind of like need to talk to her. And we met up and I just really couldn't bring myself to like, uh, cross that boundary and like even bring it up. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And then a week later she, uh, she got in a fight with the friend of mine that I referred to, you know, they were together and they had just had a child. They got into a fight one evening and, uh, you know, sh- her mother found her, you know, she had hung herself uh, wow. with a, wow. with a wire hanger. You know, she, she wanted to make sure that she went, you know what I'm saying? She didn't oh my God. Yeah. use a, uh, a regular wire or a rope, something that could snap. She used something that she wasn't going to be able to yank off and think twice about, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, hello to, uh, Christian Cunard who joins us in the Facebook live chat. Um, wow. That's, uh, that's her. And her, and her mother is the one who found her. Her mother is the one that found her, man. Oh, and and like I said in the verse, um, so, uh, I, I had went out the night before and, you know, I had, I was like, I had slept in that day and my phone was off. So my mom, um, we all kind of lived in the same neighborhood and my mom said she was pulling out of her driveway at her home and she heard like these blood curdling screams down the road. And so she drove in that direction. It was actually the friend of mine who uh, was dating her at the time. And I guess he had gotten the news and, you know, he was pretty distraught and he was running down, you know, the street kind of being, you know, uh, just crying and yelling and stuff. Right. So she picks him up and takes him over there and then starts to try to get a hold of me. Since my phone was off, she couldn't get a hold of me. And, um, 
so she went to my father's house where I was living at the time and like woke me up and I'm half asleep and she mm. takes me to go get some flowers and like, you know, take them to her and everything. And I, like I said, I really didn't even understand what was going on until I met up with my buddy yeah. and he like kind of tried to, conf- he tried to confide in me because I was always like the rock in our circle of friends. And I had never experienced loss like that before. So I didn't really know what to do for him. And he fell oh. apart. And at, at that point in time, it started to resonate with me that she had even passed away. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. It, it was, uh, it's something that stuck with me my entire life up until this point, you know, like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I've, I've written others, uh, other material about it, but this is the, the, I don't know, does the song bring this story out of me? You know what I'm saying? To, mm-hmm. to Basically, the song is about the mourning process that people feel where they become angry and they can become resentful. Like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, they can feel like blame, like they, they feel guilt even. You know sure, what I'm saying? Like, sure. that's why I wrote the the song as How Could You? Because sometimes mm-hmm. people feel like I've dealt with that for a long time feeling like if I would have told her something, maybe she'd still be alive today. Right. And, uh, you know, that's, that's why at the end of the second verse, like people have to know you can't save everybody. Like no matter how hard you're there for people, like some people are still going to always choose what they choose to do. And like, there's nothing that you could have done yeah. to prevent it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, absolutely. Because that also can lead to more, like, you know what I'm saying? A lot of suicides come from the fact that, they experience suicide. Some some people will f- just follow in the footsteps of what they were experiencing. You know what I'm saying? People lose mm-hmm. parents to suicide. They end up committing suicide. People yeah. lose siblings and so on and so forth. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's it, just you have to know that you you are enough, even if you can't you can't be there and heal somebody. You right. Know what I'm saying? Right. And also too, the how could you? I mean, what that kind of evokes for me is that that feeling of you know how could how could this person um it's a hard it, it it's a hard thing to articulate how could this how could this person do this to us those of us who loved that person you know how could they take themselves how could he or she take him or herself away from us you know yeah. like that permanently you know and 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 without any you know with with, with no recourse it's it's um you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's a, it's yeah, a no, I understand thing. completely, you know, I'm, cause that me and, uh, me and the buddy of mine that she was dating, we, we're not close at all anymore. He kind of, uh, he kind of cut anybody else out of his life that reminded her, that reminded him of her. And, yeah. uh, you know, he, he definitely went through feelings of like, how could you just, uh, leave, our daughter like this and everything, you know what I'm saying? Like there, it, it's so many things because I even went through the reason why we're not friends anymore is because when he was dealing with his period where he was mourning and, and being neglectful, like he was kind of not taking care of business and not taking care of his daughter there for a little while. And I even started to, you know, start being like, man, what are you doing? You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, how could you not be here for your daughter after she just lost her mother like this? And, right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of, you, you have to try to be empathetic with people. Like, I don't know what it's like to, to have lost a companion like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like this woman was only a friend of mine. She wasn't a lover or anything like that, you know? So yeah. I have no idea what he was going through yeah. to, to, to make those decisions to be, you know, absent right right and it's it's um you know when people are are going through what what they go through that that drives them to that point oh hello by the way to uh john c hopwood in the facebook live chat and i see a randall kelly in there as well so um hopefully a lot of people are gonna are gonna hear this conversation today because this is important and you know it it may help somebody um yeah something that i i think is has been a positive uh over the past Especially in the last 10 years, at least this is my perception. I'm, I'm curious, Truth, if you agree with this, but I feel like a lot of the stigma has kind of been removed around mental illness because depression is extraordinarily common, whether it's, you know, I mean, this time, we're in a time of year, and I don't know, I, I mean, I know it's maybe not so much in your part of the country, but it's certainly in the Northeast, 
you know, there's there's seasonal depression people suffer from, and then there's, you know, some people have have chronic depression. Some people are, some people aren't uh, prone to depression uh, necessarily. Uh, unless they go through a traumatic event. I mean, so everyone has, has experienced depression at, at one point or another, but some people have it just because they have it. Like me, I, um, you know, I, I struggle with depression. It's, it seems to be in my family. Um, I've never, I've had, uh, you know, what they, and you, you'll obviously know this term, you know, suicidal ideations. Um, you know, which is where you, I've, I've never really talked nope. about, I've never really talked about this on the air, but, um, you know, where you, you think about suicide, but, um, but I have this, it, it's kind of odd in a way. I, I have this sort of built in safety mechanism in that, um, I'm afraid of death. I'm, I'm literally just okay. afraid to die. So even when my, I can relate to that. Absolutely. Can you? Okay. Yeah. So even when yeah, my, I, I, I obsess about death a lot, actually. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So even when my suicidal ideations are at their worst, I, I could never, I could never harm myself. Um, but, but I, but I feel like, you know, like I couldn't have said that out loud 10 years ago, you know, and mm-hmm. I, I feel like there's been a shift in our culture where people are able to be more open about mental illness and depression because it is so common. And, and I and, agree with that. I, uh, yeah. you know, it, I feel like, um, being a, being a male, first of all, I mean, not to say that, it's any different for males or females, uh, whatever mental um, illness you might be, you know, having to face. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just, you know, because there's a stigma around being masculine and stuff like that, I know that um, it, it wasn't always easy for the the male community to sit there and say, well, I'm vulnerable or I don't feel sturdy as a man, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Or like I'm feeling down and I don't feel like I can take care of and provide for my family, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, right, right. yeah, I do feel like it is kind of becoming more accepted. Um, just not actually accepted. Like it's not something we necessarily have to accept as far as like, um, people weren't empathetic to the idea of what was going on with others. Mm-hmm. Like I was explaining last night, I don't feel like every single person ever uh, has dealt with depression. Like I didn't understand depression for the longest time. Mm. I used to be very insensitive to, people who felt down because I'm a very resilient person. And um, I recently in the last few years started dealing with depression myself. And I understand what you're talking about as far as like, uh, you know, people do deal with seasonal depression. Sometimes uh, people get like the winter blues and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, And I can understand how like you guys being from the Northeast, you guys deal with a lot of uh, snow and, and I'm a, Lack of I, you know, sunlight. We come from the desert, so like I can't go without the sun very long. I don't even like being in the in the northwest where it's <laughs> yeah. all muggy and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I go without sun too long, and I start being weird and stuff. So yeah, I can understand how people um, deal with like different forms of depression, where it could be year longer. It can be moment by moment with most people. Yeah. You know and I remember that last year I was dealing with so much uh, depression that I literally was battling every single day, mm. not quitting music. Mm. You know what wow. I'm saying? Like I just like was getting up there in age and I've thrown a lot of opportunities away, like not necessarily on purpose, but uh, I didn't feel like they were right for me. Sure. And uh, you know, some of them were just unfortunate circumstances and uh, you know, you can't help but look back and be like, wow, man, like maybe this isn't really going to happen for me. Or maybe I, yeah. my chance came and went or something or whatever makes you feel down. Some people, yeah. uh, you know, they do like this particular thing is this song is not only for like, this song isn't for the people who it's not for the people who committed suicide. This is for the people who are still alive, having to deal with right. the loss of that person that they loved and right. trying to make sure that other people don't, uh, inflict harm on themselves or aren't successful with the, you know, the commitment and don't leave their family feeling these feelings. You know what I'm saying? It's like, right. this is kind of supposed to be like a, a, a eye opener to people who are like, you know, this, how this, uh, you may feel like you're alone, but you're not. And you right. sometimes need to just sit back and recognize who is actually there for you. You know what I'm saying? I'm somebody who get, um, a little emotional, like if I feel like I'm not being supported by somebody, even this morning, yeah. you know, like I'm, uh, 
you know, I'm starting to like date this girl and stuff like that. And I was being a little too much for her. And like, I just had to sit back and be like, okay, like this is a new relationship. Like we can't expect, we can't expect somebody to be able to carry all of our baggage all at once. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. And you have to be understanding of other people too. But I know that being in what it's, it's a very sensitive situation to be in. Yeah. Cause you don't feel empathetic in the points where you're wanting to harm yourself. You know what I'm saying? Right, you're right. You're not looking at your life through that perspective. You're not thinking logically at all. All you're saying is, I want to escape. It's the same way that uh, people use drugs, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. is You're trying to escape whatever you feel is bringing you distress yeah. and, and dis-ease, you know what I'm saying? That's, That's a- why they call oh, go, it go. a mental deceit, like a disease, because basically you're just, you're trying to find peace within the the chemical imbalance that you might be facing or whatever, right, you know? Right. That's, that's another safety valve that I've always had, um, myself. And in addition to being, uh, afraid of death, I'm also very afraid of drugs. So I've, I've never done any hard drugs. Well, to kinda, good for you. Cause yeah. I'm super not afraid of drugs <laughs> and I've put myself in very bad, uh, oh. like I'm not suicidal. Like I'm not the type of person that like, um, will usually inflict harm on myself like cutting or um yeah like i don't walk around i don't i don't carry a firearm or anything like that you know i don't own firearms or anything but it would probably yeah. it would probably be best if i didn't right you know right yeah just i i, I don't trust myself to have firearms that's why i don't have them and <laughs> well, uh, that's a good reason <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know but like i find other ways to be a reckless person sometimes i really will you know go out on a binge and and drink too much and then like i got body slammed in the middle of the street twice oh my in God. my underwear right before thanksgiving so, <laughs> and i wasn't even having a bad night <laughs> wow <laughs> like i wasn't even mad i was <laughs> excited and just like decided i wanted to take on the world i got jumped i got maced that night oh you know my what God. i got 86 for tons of clubs in in my city Jeez. you know what i'm saying so it was just yeah. like I, and then i had been on a destructive pattern since that night because we had just dropped this record mm-hmm. and I'm having to relive it and I'm having to relive it. And, you know, uh, not everybody in the world knows what you're going through, especially if you're, sp- if you're like the strong person and it's usually the strong people who will commit to suicide and mm-hmm. you wouldn't even know, you know, it's always the happiest people. Nobody expected Robin Williams to kill himself. Right. Right. You know or- what I'm saying? Nobody expected Ch- Chester Bennington to kill himself. Right. Yeah. You know, they, they spoke to his wife and she was yeah. like, he was so happy. He was so ready to go on this tour. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now other, other people have like their different ideas of what happened with those people. Cause it's a different yeah. situation. You know, it, there's it, a, a lot of different things that get involved in those situations. Anthony but, Bourdain was another one. Nobody like nobody. Yeah. Would've... That was a big surprise. Actually. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of people weren't really uh, expecting I didn't never know he had issues like that. You could see yeah. Robin Williams wore it in his eyes. You know what I'm saying? Like no matter he how did. Uh, You're right. vibrant he was, like you could tell there was pain behind those eyes. You're Chester, right. He wore it on his sleeve being somebody who was vocal. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But yeah. Bourdain, like no, I didn't follow him very closely, but he always seemed like a pretty jolly dude. He seemed like he was enjoying the, his best life. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And people don't understand too. Like, I remember um, uh, when, uh, you know, this, I mean, obviously this goes back, wow, early 90s, but, um, boy, where does the time go? When uh, when Kurt Cobain uh, committed suicide and, you know, people would, would were in disbelief, obviously, and very shocked, but also, um, I mean, I don't know how, I don't know how old you are, so I don't know how clearly you remember this, but I remember it very vividly. And uh, I, w- I was still pretty small when he died. Oh, okay. But um, so I, I, I was I was already an adult and I, I can tell you from my perspective, it was like, you know, people who people who've never experienced depression don't understand that, you know, you can have, uh, you know, you can have the world by the, the proverbial cojones and, and have every, you know, and, and look like you have everything that anyone could ever want. But if there's something going on neurochemically. You know, all the good things don't necessarily matter um, if you're yeah. depressed. And, of course, he was, you know, notoriously depressed. And that's that's something I try to keep in mind, too, is that people who've never experienced depression, you know, I, I, I try to be kind of patient with them because sometimes people who've never 
experienced it, people who are just naturally not wired to be depressed, you know, they don't understand. Yeah. They look at people who are depressed as, well, what do you have to be sad about? It's like you're 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 just sad for the hell of it. You know, you've got this great life. What are you yeah, sad yeah. about? And it's not their fault. I can fault. understand that because that's exactly how I used to be. Yeah. I used to just, I used to become very impatient with people who I'm fixing them all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, yeah. Having a bad day again, having a bad day again, having a bad day again. <laughs> right. But you're not understanding like, yeah, they are, they're having a bad day again, dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. And like, yeah. And you're not understanding it because you don't have bad days. Right. A bad day to you is very uh, minor compared to their worst day could be something that you would never be able to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Right. And exactly. Yeah. A bad day for them is is your worst day. You know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. And it's and it's not and it's not anybody's fault. Like like somebody who doesn't realize somebody who doesn't understand that. I can understand from their perspective. You know, someone who's never been depressed. Why? It doesn't yeah. make sense to them. You know, it, it's like my buddy's uh, bro older brother. Um, he deals with some his brain just doesn't produce as much serotonin as like the average person's brain. Yeah. So he's never really happy. Like mm. he, he like he gets uh, his low points. And I'm not sure like if he I, I've never talked to him about like if he's ever experienced depression. Yeah. But like we always used to just think he was like just a bummer. <laughs> and right. he kind of is, you know what I'm saying? Like he yeah. wasn't trying to be like rude to us ever. He wasn't nef necessarily, uh, necessarily like trying to be a downer. It's just, he didn't know. And we didn't know that his brain was operating differently than most of ours were. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like depression does come from different things. Like depression mm -hmm. can come from, you know, uh, some people lose their job and, and that'll create a depression. You know, some right. people lose, uh, you know, their loved one or their, they end a relationship or, um, you know, just some sort of something that's devastating to you. Like the, when I was younger, my uncle told me, cause he's a musician too. Uh, he was like, one thing that will connect every single person in the world is pain. Everybody mm -hmm. feels pain. Mm -hmm. And like, I think that's another thing that people forget is that, you know, we get caught up in being in, in America. You, we get caught up in being Americans where we're just like, this is America, and everybody's like so worried about what Donald Trump's doing, and oh my goodness, the government shutdown is like, you've never experienced like real poverty, like you've never experienced what people in a third world country are dealing with. Who deals with depression out there? Mm -hmm. You know, who's dealing with, who in Africa who's starving out there is dealing with depression? Who in, who in the Middle East who's uh, lost all their family because of a bombing is dealing with depression mm -hmm. or who's committing suicide in these other places, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And like, I, that's what I'm really trying to do is, is get people to come together and, and stop making it about gender or race or, at, you know, culture at mm -hmm. all, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, we all breathe oxygen. None mm -hmm. of us can operate without oxygen coming into our lungs. No. We can't operate without water or food. And we need to start to understand that the only way we're going to stop hurting ourselves and hurting other people, because not all suicides are self-inflicted. Sometimes they're murder suicides. You know, like right. uh, I had a buddy of mine. You know, I'm not even close to this dude. I met him randomly outside of a concert one night. I gave him a ride and he hits me up one day and he's kind of like, you want to hang out? I was like, sure. He shows up. He's acting weird. Hmm. I'm not really understanding what's going on with him. And he's kind of getting on my nerves, you know, cause I <laughs> yeah. don't even know this dude. And he's kind of being like weird with my people. Like he needed somebody to confide in, but he wasn't trying to confide in the whole room. Yeah. So he ends up getting me to a point where I, I needed to leave. So he was like, I'll, I'll give you a ride today somewhere. Blah, 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 blah. So I get in the car, he sits down and tells me, that his sister's husband murdered his mom, his father, his little brother, nearly murdered his sister who was married to him, and then killed himself. Oh, my God. And, like, wow. yeah, you know what I'm saying? And, like, I'm sitting there trying to be as empathetic as possible with him in this situation. Yeah. And, you know, he's drinking and he's driving. And, like I said, I, I'm pretty reckless, so I'm not really, like, <laughs> like tripping on him yeah. like i know that he's 
having a hard day. Yeah, yeah. And so he's yeah, no giving kidding. me this ride, and he starts to kind of open up to me. And as he's opening up to me, he starts to put my life in jeopardy. And I had to check him mm-hmm. and be like, look, dog, I'm not going to tell you that you're ever going to get over this. That's devastating. You just lost your whole family. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's, wow. Uh, that's like, that's, I don't even know how to comprehend that. And I, I'm that yeah. somebody, that's something that, like, is one of my greatest fears in the world is when I was a child, I wasn't even able to sleep over at friends' houses. I'd always call my parents to pick me up in the middle of the night because I would get these haunting feelings that they were going to be in danger. Really? You know? Huh. Yeah, like, I suffer from, like, paranoia and stuff like that. Okay. And and paranoid delusions. Like, I oh, wow. go into the the extremities of my, like, I'm about to start to become a stand-up comedian because all of the stories that I tell people are so hilarious yeah. after the fact, after you look at it through rationale for like, you know, perspective. Yeah, yeah. That people are like, that's crazy that your imagination even works like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I'll start trying to connect dots that don't connect together. And, <laughs> like, it's humongous conspiracies come together and stuff, you know? Yeah. And, uh, like, so, yeah, I can understand, like, that it's not, it's not something I could even understand what that dude is going through. But oh, yeah. we're in the car, and I was like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to tell you to stay alive like i'm going to tell you that life is worth living for a lot of people yeah. i'm not going to tell you what to do and, and, but the right. moment you start putting my life in jeopardy <laughs> yeah <laughs> then we have a problem right you know exactly. exactly yeah and how, how did he respond to that when you said that to him um i think he appreciated me checking him like that because yeah. i don't even think he really wanted to take himself out or anything it's just yeah yeah when you deal with something that's such a Tra- tragic event like that i don't even know what, what's the word for that what's worse than tragedy what's worse than <laughs> yeah, you I know. know what i'm saying like no i know what you mean yeah tragedy doesn't seem like a strong enough word it's like wow <laughs> i'm like that That's... doesn't describe what i feel this man is going through oh, and i yeah. and, and sorry to laugh it's just uh you know i use humor as a, a form of therapy like I, yeah. i'm creating a brand uh i've created a brand that's developing um programs to help with uh you know uh, awareness or mental illness and amongst other things, you know, uh, that it, it all could kind of be put under the umbrella of mental illness, but sometimes yeah. people aren't necessarily dealing with mental illness. And, you know, we're trying to help the homeless and we're trying to help folks that are dealing with like alcohol and, and drug problems and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but suicide awareness is something that is, is always been something that i've really kind of been passionate about since my first experience with it now the other one was just like like i said i didn't go to my homie's funeral and i had a dream and he came to me and i was like you know you're in a dream i'm a i'm a vivid dreamer you know like a lucid dreamer and so like i'm aware of my dreams yeah yeah and i'm like oh oh man it's good to see you la 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 like they trying to tell me that you died and he's like, I was like, did you die? And he's like, yes. You know? Wow. And are you, are, are, are you, um, are, are you aware that you're, when you say you're a lucid dreamer, are you aware that you're actually dreaming or is it more just that you're kind of in control of your dream, but you don't necessarily know um, that it you're depends. dreaming? Yeah. It depends actually, because like sometimes I'm not aware I'm actually in a dream. I'm just kind of a conscious like that. Yeah. Okay. Like I'm conscious in the moment how you would be like in a in a and then you look back. You know what I'm saying? Like I had this yeah. weird dream one time where uh, I I was I don't know if you're familiar with the rapper Logic, yes. but I was like at this person's house arguing with him about something, and then somebody that was supposed to be part of his like entourage turns to me and tells me I'm gonna make it, and I like laugh like Yeah, I know like arrogant right and like i walk out of the house and i end up like um getting into a car and this is where you if you were aware that you were dreaming would be like this is definitely a dream because i'm like in a diesel truck um kind of like i guess you would say like in a a monster truck arena type of situation where i'm like ramping the cut the the car and it's getting way too much like air for reality you know what i'm saying yeah and at some point like I'm losing control of of the vehicle and die and wake up and I'm like riding this black horse and like my mom's there and I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, did I die? Yeah. And I wake up. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Oh. And so like in that particular situation, it was like 
I was aware of whatever I felt like that message I was receiving in the dream was that like, you're going to make it keep going. Interesting. Message, I was like, yeah, like, okay. But I wasn't in control, meaning like, <laughs> there are some points in time where I can make what I want happen in the dream. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like maybe, maybe you're doing something and like in the dream police show up and you're like, no, this is a dream. I don't have to worry about that. But this is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Or other times I'm just kind of really in the moment feeling it like it's real life. Yeah. And then I wake up and I'm like, oh, wow, that wasn't real. Like <laughs> I dream about meeting celebrities a lot. Oh, you know dude? I had a dream oh. that I was hanging out with Tech Nine one night. Oh. I had a couple of dreams about that. But recently I had a dream <laughs> that I was hanging out with Tech Nine and like he he was having a bad night or something and was like trying to have me go out with him to drink or something. Yeah. And I'm and that was one of the dreams where I was conscious. Oh, okay. Where I was like, Oh my god, I'm around Tech Nine. Bro, you need to listen <laughs> to my music, bro, you need to listen to my music. And it's like it's yeah. a dream. I'm not getting that. I'm not actually getting this opportunity right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, that's a nice dream though. It's a good dream. It was a cool dream. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they're yeah. interesting stories to talk about afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, tell me about, uh, I, I want to ask you this ab about the, uh, about the song, getting back to, um, how could you, uh, it's, it's, it, I, I think I had said this to you online. It's unique in that I, I, I don't think I've heard anything quite like it, at least not, not for a long time. If I have, I mean, it's kind of got, it's kind of like a fusion of, of rock and hip hop in the sense that yeah there's rapping and there's guitars but it's also it's also kind of on a on a on its own uh, island in a way like I can't think of anything yeah, that yeah, sounds Yeah I could definitely agree with that cuz yeah. I've been like trying to figure out where to market it towards and uh yeah, yeah. like I'm not marketing it only towards the like you know I guess you would say like the Limp Biscuits or you know those like rap metal groups that were all uh, coming out in the late 90s and stuff yeah I don't feel like it only fits in that category I feel like it's a lot, a lot more emotional. I'm like, wow, I think that like real actual fans of rock and metal could listen to this song and relate to it and get over the fact that I'm kind of rapping, but it's not like a real hip hoppy type of song. It doesn't right. have a lot of bounce and it doesn't. Um, and then the, the chorus, you know, shout out, man, I'm so sorry for not even shouting them out yet, but shout out to Heathen who did the screams and Chopper Manhattan, those are artists that I work with. I represent Chopper. He has a band called uh, Saturday Night Riot. Uh, they okay. do, they're a two-piece. They kind of do like Southern rock mixed with like uh, like real fast rap and stuff. They're, they're Interesting. like an amazing group. Ooh. And so like, I feel like he always had, he always has like a, a unique approach to the vocals. That's why I asked him to be on it. Yeah. And I was just kind of trying to, like I was trying to hit that like, I hadn't really ever done anything that was mixed with rock. And mm. I wanted to try to do, I'm always trying to figure out how to do something that stands out. Like I don't right. ever like to emulate people's sound. I'm never, uh, you know, I do multiple different styles, but I'm not ever trying to like, I want to sound as like sonically valuable as everybody else. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I want the sound yeah. quality to be as good as everybody else's music. Right. But I don't want it to sound like them. You right. Know what I'm yeah. Which I I think is smart. You know, a lot of people try to try to tra uh, chase trends and whatnot. But the but the problem with that is by the time you you know you have something that you're ready to put out there, if you're chasing a trend, you know the the, the trend is it already, could be dying already right. It's it's already you know. And I it's funny too when I'm talking about that with people. I always go back to the the uh, Kurt Cobain example again. You know, imagine if because mm -hmm. you 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 might be too young to to really like I said. I was already an, an adult when all this happened, but. Um, yeah. When Nirvana, people say that he would have wrote better music. People say he they don't know if he had anything else in him. Well, the thing is, when Nirvana when Nirvana really kind of exploded, um, you know, it killed uh, you know what we often refer to as hair metal, kind of overnight. You know? Oh yeah. And uh, and and I always say, well, imagine if if uh, Kurt Cobain had listened to whomever might have told him, no, you should write some hair metal songs because that's what's popular right now. And then Nirvana never would have happened. And you know, so by by doing what he wanted yeah. to do, uh, you know, he changed the world. And it was it was quick too. It was, um, you yeah. know, I, I mean, it, yeah, it yeah, happened. No, I, I mean, I wasn't necessarily like conscious as as a person, but yeah. I'm a student of like uh, music history. Okay. And so, you know, I used to sit around and watch like the VH1 documentaries of like people and stuff like that. Yeah. There's a lot of documentaries about 
uh, Kurt Cobain. So, like, I, I'm a little familiar with, like, the sensation they bring upon the world when they decided to, like, step out of the box and and do what they did. Oh, yeah. Which I admire for sure, you know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think a, a track, too, like How Could You, I mean, obviously, I, I think that's something that – um you know, I, I can I can definitely imagine a lot of rock oriented uh, stations playing in in the rock format. It's hard to um, the urban format. You, you you're a a rock station, correct? Well, this actually, I, that, I think that was the one thing I didn't ask. Well, here at WMNH, I mean, there there's some rock. It, it's actually kind of. Are you mix. guys multi genre? Yeah, it's it's kind of multi genre. Plus, is you know, talk, this, cool. this is more of a talk show, and the morning shows more mm, of a talk okay, show. Okay. Although there's some music, but but um, but it's hard to. Like, like with a song like that, it's hard to really infiltrate urban stations if you have, like, if you have guitars in there. You know, urban urban stations that play hip hop are like scared away for some reason. Yeah, they're not gonna they're they're not gonna play that record. They, they're right. gonna hear guitars and screams in there, and they're gonna be like, <laughs> "Get out of here, kid!" Right, right. But which I, is cool. Yeah, which is cool. I like that actually because I don't really, man. You know what? I've never really fit in very well with a lot of people. Uh, everybody says that I, uh, I don't know, like. I did my best to create my own sound. So now that I have my own sound, I'm dealing with the catch 22 of now you have to be willing to be brave enough to present something that they haven't already heard before. Right. right. You know? So yeah, yeah. You deal with a lot of like, you know, a lot of people tell me that I, I sound like this dude or I sound like that dude. And I can see where like people have told me that I sound like D real from Cypress Hill which I don't, I don't hear, but, like, that's a compliment. Interesting. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Shout out to Be Real, man. I'd love to work with him. <laughs> right. Uh, no but, doubt. No doubt. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And actually, Cypress Hill, they, they, they were able to uh, penetrate both urban and uh, rock stations. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I use that reference right there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, no, and I, and I can imagine I can imagine this song on on a lot of modern rock stations because, you know, because you have um, you know like Papa Roach just as one example, you know, a, a, a band that you'll yeah. hear on a modern rock station, and uh, Jacoby Shaddix does do some rapping, so it's you know, or, or Rage Against the yeah, Machine yeah, if you exactly. want to go if you want to go back a ways. So there's I, there's I think, a lot of there's a lot of dudes who come close to being like honestly, I could tell you that uh, um, Tang Nine did this song with. Corey Taylor from Slipknot mm -hmm. uh, a couple years ago. And Corey Taylor really came and he basically has a real rap style. Yeah. Because you know, he's such an aggressive, like, vocalist. Um, and, it, like, when he does break it down and become melodic, like, he mixes it all up real well. But yeah. he gets real, like, as far as the delivery of lyrics, mm -hmm. just like an MC would. Because MCs, like, I being a vocalist because i do not only like hip-hop vocals but i do reggae vocals and mm -hmm. i'm just starting to get into like everybody's gonna hate me for it because i grew <laughs> up like a real hardcore like backpack hip-hop kid yeah but i'm gonna start doing the new age like auto-tune singy stuff like i'm 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 into it you know what i'm saying i like to roll with the times i'm not so sure. i'm not you know this there was a like big old debate between uh, the there was a big rap battle between like Eminem and and MGK uh, <laughs> just recently, and like I felt like that was cool for like the rapidy rap part of hip hop, which I enjoyed I always it. Love, yeah, yeah. But uh, I like I like melodies, man. <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm saying? yeah. Like I, even when I listen to to rock music, I don't always listen to like the the most hardcore like let's just play hard and fast type of. I like it definitely like hard and I definitely mm -hmm. like it like crazy, but I always like it to be able to break down and be beautiful again. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I like rock to be a beautiful, destructive thing, not necessarily just all this hellfire. Right. You know I mean? Yeah. You like some mel <laughs> melody in there and, and, and all that. Yeah. yeah. And that's probably why I came out with a melodic rock tone if I was going to blend genres before I ever came out with like a real hard, like tough, like rock tone, you know what I'm saying? Right. Which we'll right. definitely be doing like soon. We definitely will be uh, continuing to like uh, work with rock tones and everything like that. Like I love rock and roll. I love mm -hmm. um, 
all different forms of, of rock music, punk rock music. Like I was outside of a Descendants show when I was getting body slammed that night. Oh, you know no kidding. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like actually yeah. shout out to, uh, the drummer from what's his name? Tom or something like that. I don't remember Dave, I don't maybe know. Dave, man, I should remember that. Cause he put me on the guest list. That's oh. why I was so excited. I was like, puts me on a guest list. I'm in there. My uncle's the one that introduced me to the band. Yeah. And so they, uh, you know, I bring him to the show as my plus one. And uh, so Clean Sheets is like the only song I really like from them. Yeah. And he was like, well, I'm the one that wrote that song. So like that was the craziest, coolest experience to, you know, meet him and him be the person that wrote the song that I like. So I don't really listen to them very closely and stuff, but that's oh. the song that I always like loved and stuff since I was a kid. Oh, that's cool. And, uh, you know, I got to know him a little bit. He was like, the only reason I'm really like putting you on the guest list is because I had like a girlfriend out here and, I, and where I stay is Albuquerque, New Mexico. Yeah. We call it the land of punk rock and dead girls. You know what I'm saying? Huh. Uh, <laughs> like there was a poet that wrote a, uh, a poem about Albuquerque called the land of punk rock and dead girls. And it, oh, like, okay. touched me one night. We were like, uh, we went to Flagstaff, Arizona. He was a slam poet that was on tour and we like took him to Flagstaff, Arizona. He was kind of like, doing like the traveler type of thing yeah you know yeah uh, just getting rides where he could and hopping buses and doing whatever he could and stuff and i've actually done that before i like hitchhiked on bands warp tour oh no uh, kidding oh wow in 2016 and then i got oh. myself like a placement on bands warp tour but i got kicked off <laughs> why <So. laughs> that sounds like a good story uh, i wish it was like some crazy interesting story uh, but it was just like a big miss understanding like i was uh, hosting a stage in the parking lot and i you know i'm trying to get this nonprofit off of the ground and so i was like having people make donations so that they could get like per performance slots and stuff and yeah and somebody got a like a little overzealous and it unfortunately turned out that like you know shout out to kevin lyman like he's a cool dude i mean him i actually almost died on uh the tour the first year like, I got into a car accident. Like, I was basically, like, helping, like, vendors drive. Yeah. And one vendor fell asleep at the wheel, slams into the back of a oh my God. semi. Like, he woke up right before he <sighs> slammed into it. So he, like, slams on the brakes. We still oh, hit. I wake up. Wow. Windshield's all cracked. It looks like I'm in, like, butterfly effect. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what's going on? That's a hell of a way <laughs> to wake up. Jeez. Yeah, man. And then, we, like, luckily, like, nothing happened to us, you know? Yeah. And, like the the semi Jeez. just left like it acted Ooh. like it didn't even feel it you really know what I mean? oh no kidding luckily wow. somebody else uh was Jeez. on the same highway that i was driving for the night before and came and picked me up but yeah you know it was just unfortunate unfortunate circumstance his daughter and i like share a name her last name is my first name and oh, okay. somebody went over there and was like oh i paid this person to like get in here it became a big old like fiasco and everything oh, and kind of asked me to you know to leave the tour and stuff and so yeah you know that it is what it is and that's what i'm saying is like i came home from that situation and went into one of the darkest depressions that i've ever been in yeah. but it also sprang something great because what it what it taught me is i was i had thought i had made it already and we were completely unprepared to be on that tour yeah we didn't have any promotional items or anything like i was just winging it you know what i'm saying right and you know, like you get this like idea in your head that like just because you're like, oh man, like I'm cool, I'm over here, like hanging out with all these like rock star bands and stuff like that. We're on this tour, and you think that you've made it and you have it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, like right. it brought me home and put me in a dark place, but to fight through the darkness because that's what I do. That's usually what keeps me out of a dark place. Is I wrote the How Could You song with anger and with screams because that's what gets me through the day yeah people will always be like how come you're so angry and i'm like because sometimes you need fire to get you through like trains were ran off of coal mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah because you need that sometimes you need to be able to push yourself through like sometimes you just need to develop like that's what our programs are supposed to be about the my kind of therapy uh so it's hashtag mkot if you look that up on youtube it originally was just a way that i was trying to like funnel people to our music videos and our content you can find saturday night right there uh they have videos and stuff yeah i gotta check and, them uh, out yeah definitely you know but now like i just like i said i'm not afraid of drugs bro so i right. snorted a rail of meth and dropped oh, acid and decided like because i had to go to this festival in california right. and i drove through uh like arizona thinking that i was dead and on an endless <laughs> highway 
Uh, you know what I'm saying? Wow. And then got this premonition telling me that I needed to turn this brand into something that was going to help people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because we had already started to uh, create like a clothing line. Like you can get hashtag MKOT merch and stuff like that. If people are interested in getting uh, hoodies, we're going to be doing a tour in September for Suicide Awareness Month. It's going to be themed around how could you. We're going to have, um, we have, I just uh, designed some crew socks that come with um, the semicolon. I'm not sure if uh, everybody's familiar with that symbol. I, I wasn't actually even very familiar with it. No. But, um, there was somebody who committed suicide in our circle that I wasn't very close with. Okay. When I was younger, that affected somebody who was like my best friend. Yeah. And he got the semicolon tattooed on uh, on himself like real big. And he was the one that explained to me that's what that was about. Right. And so oh. like we decided to go ahead and, and put the semicolon on the hoodies and use it as just the basic like cover for the track because what it means is the semicolon is where you would have decided to end, but you continued. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So like, for people that aren't uh, oh. aware of what the symbolism behind the semicolon is, that's interesting. It's like huh. um, you you basically <laughs> decided to continue. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, that's what that's, that's what at that's the bottom of everything. Cool. Huh. That's what we're trying to make people feel like. You know, I had like a 17 year old kid in the Czech Republic hit me up one day and tell me that I helped him get through the day, and he was feeling like you know he wanted to do harm upon himself and the music kept him through that. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And that's that's ultimately, like, at the end of the day, it's not about money. It's not about uh, awards or accolades or publicity or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I wanted to be able to give. So, like, if you go and get hoodies and apparel, I try to um, give a percentage of the money that we're raising from all of this uh, merchandise to a, a program that, was already in existence, like whatever, uh, you know, they have like the national suicide awareness programs that you can donate to and stuff. But yeah, the company that we were using to distribute the merchandise didn't want to have anything to do with the suicide stuff. Really? And so like, you, yeah. Why, yeah. Why, so, why, like, why is that? Every Did... time I would try to produce an item, like they just kept getting flagged. And I, so I basically was just like, we still need to do this. Yeah. But we're, we're going to just go ahead and, and give a portion of the money to one of these funds after, you know, we raise whatever money we raise for the tour and do sure. the tour and everything. Like, yeah. you know, after the tour, whatever we uh, raise from merchandise and from touring, and, you know, we're going to be giving back to some of these programs until we can start developing the programs that that we're trying to develop for ourselves. You yeah. Know what I'm to be able to give back to people. Like, I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to make people feel like there's a healthy way for them to express themselves, even if it's through pain. Right. So my sister, right. She goes with a lot of stuff herself, depression and stuff like that. And, um, you know, when, when I was 18, she came by my mom's house and she was like, just having a hard day, you know what I'm saying? And she was like wanting to harm herself and stuff like that. And she was, you know, she used to like to like burn or something like that. I'm not really sure what, what she used to do, but I know that she used to kind of like inflict pain on herself. Yeah. People do that burning um, and cutting and and that kind of stuff. Yeah. But like, I'm, I try to to advocate for the healthy expressions. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, if you want to go and get piercings, if you want body modifications, I'll even go as far as saying, like, I imagine that is very therapeutic for the people who like to suspend themselves. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> but do it in an atmosphere that's controlled and do it it's, in a place where you, like, aren't going to take it too far. Right. You know where, you're not, where you're not going to end up like, uh, harming yourself. Like, I yeah. artists that are like, we ain't really trying to give you a tattoo if you all faded, man, because right. we don't want to hurt you. Right, exactly. You know what I'm we don't want yeah. you to hurt yourself and stuff like that. Yeah. So, like, that's what we're that's what we're really trying to do is like some things that people feel are taboo. We want them to be able to feel a little bit more okay with it. Like you said, um, it's becoming something that we're able to do, like able to express more. You know what I'm saying? People mm-hmm. are able to say, "Yeah, I do feel depressed," or "I, uh, I do have anxiety," or uh, "I may be bipolar," or "I may suffer from." Or, you know, uh, schizophrenia or multiple personality disorder or some other personality disorder or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Because my sister is actually in the mental health field and she's helping me develop all of these programs. She was the one that oh, told me that cool. we should probably umbrella, 
like put everything under the umbrella of mental health. Right. But I feel like some of these things are separate issues. You know what I'm saying? I do know that like a lot of our homeless population are people who are dealing with mental illness. Oh, absolutely. I do know that a lot of yeah. people who are dealing with drug and alcohol um, problems are dealing with mental illness and they're trying right. to uh, medicate themselves. They self-medicate, and you know, yeah. Some of these things are just lubricant for our mental illness to be worse. Right. My, I swear to God, we were getting drunk the day that we filmed the music video and like, I'm so glad that I have my team around me because we, I thought that day was going to be a bad day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it ended up being a really good day because me and my homie, like even the dude who was shooting the video, he was like, look guys, you guys are doing really great, but you need to like stop joking around because you guys won't stop smiling in these shots. <laughs> it's a sad song. I can imagine you know where, where that would be an issue. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And yeah. I was actually a little disappointed. I thought that we might have caught a, better footage of my actual emotions rather than the i'm not necessarily an actor i've been interested in acting before and stuff but yeah. i would never say that i'm necessarily like the greatest actor or anything like that but i could tell it was bad acting <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you know but, i'll just be honest you but know, but i don't art. know if other people can tell yeah. somebody tried to tell me they were like it looks so genuine i'm like maybe i just don't like i look like like a fat john mayer <laughs> With a beard. <laughs> like, oh, those wow. shots where I was crying. I just, yeah. I had the John Mayer bird mouth and stuff. Like, is that sexy? I don't know. I gotta, I gotta Other watch that like now. It. Is that, is, is the video up on, on YouTube? Cause I haven't seen the video yet. The video is gonna be available on YouTube, uh, midnight tonight. Oh, cool. We, we've okay. had a little trouble, uh, you know, like I said, I've, I've been on a rampage and so. Yeah. Well, see, I ended up. Uh, and I'm really curious to see. Unfortunate it now. circumstances made it so that I couldn't. I couldn't uh, upload the video for a while. Oh, okay. but yeah, we're gonna have it up by midnight tonight. Just look up hashtag MKOT. You guys will be able to watch it. You can watch it on Facebook now. Yeah. If you go to the Truth page, it's just Truth um, with dots in between the letters, just capital T, all the rest are lowercase. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Yeah. Definitely. Uh. Definitely will be up by midnight tonight. Oh, very cool, very cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for that. Well, and it's a way better version too, because the version that we have on Facebook is kind of, uh, is low quality. I uploaded it from my my cell phone, so the version that everybody has seen so far doesn't even give the video justice. Shout out to uh, R.J. Trujillo for filming the video for us. You know what I'm saying? And he decided to do it like this. And let me thank you again, man, because you know to to get on radio is like a very difficult thing mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. A lot of the time, like, I don't know when it's actually ever easy. This wasn't even easy. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, we all have dealt with trauma and yeah. we're just trying to support each other right, in, this, right. in this world. You know what I'm saying? Well, and yeah. I appreciate you doing that, man, because oh. realistically, uh, it, it helped me be able to, to present this message to people I, maybe there's somebody out there that was having a bad day. We might have helped somebody today, man, and that's that's really what it's all about. Exactly, absolutely, and and I would I would say too, and I'm, I'm really glad Jenny connected with you online and, and hooked us up. And yeah, absolutely, um, yeah. Thank you to Jenny, and definitely I'm going to get you guys those hoodies as soon as possible. Oh, wonderful. Um, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's great. You know, pro probably by the end of the month. Oh, you know sweet. Yeah, and I and I think by the way too, I, I would just say before we wrap up, um, I think that, uh, I mean personally, I think the the best way to deal with anything negative, whether it's you know uh, suicide or depression and, and and all these things, is is to be creative, and um, you know yeah and, yeah and absolutely, I would agree with that. That's that's what I think is is really uh, is really wonderful about this track that we uh, that we played earlier, and. Um, we're going to, uh, in a moment, um, you, and you, you've been very generous with your time, Truth, and I appreciate it. We're going to finish up with... I'm oh, man, thank you, man. Thank oh, you. Oh, absolutely. And I'm, I'm going to play this uh, this other track of yours that I found online uh, called Monsters that I really, really love. And what well, before we do that, and before we finish up, what can you tell us about this, about this song? Anything you, anything we should know uh, about it? So this was actually a very interesting song that I wrote... Um, so like the the hook obviously like really builds everything up and puts it all together. And so like when I was writing around what the feeling, because that's how I write music is, I'm used to um, getting already composed music and writing around the feeling that the composer was trying to like express. Yeah. So I was like, what is this telling me? You know what I'm saying? So I'm taking the the woman's vocals because that track was 
oh man, forgive me. I'm I'm terrible. I tell you like somebody <laughs> told me it was depressing. They were like, Do you remember this? Do you remember that? Like we we grew up together. I was like, I don't remember it. I'm sorry. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, uh Rel. Uh I'm thinking it's R E L L E. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's the the artist that released the original uh, vocals and so the producer syndrome shout out to syndrome he actually made both beats okay um uh he's from canada i believe oh. uh, i don't really know him personally i just you know like buy his uh his work or whatever yeah and uh yeah so like i was taking whatever he had taken from her and made and trying to like relate it to myself and at that point was i wrote that song like right after we got uh kicked off of the van store or something like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so like, yeah. I was just really sitting there. Like I really do have like outrageous thoughts, man. And so when I'm sitting there, like feeling like I can feel them creep lurking in my dreams. Like I told you guys about my dreams. Like yeah, my yeah. dreams are kind of horrifying and stuff. Like I really have a really morbid thought process. Mm. That's why I connect to like metal and stuff. Like metal to me is horror. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I connect to horror. I don't even like horror movies. Like, I deal with a lot of, like, ill spirituality and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And so, right. like, I've just recently stopped trying to allow a lot of things. That's why I was real eerie about putting out these songs, too. Because mm. I'm not, I'm, I work for, you know, uh, benevolent forces in the world. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I, and I put that word in the song because, like, there, there's a part of me that, really is the worst person in the world. Like this girl that I'm talking to, she's amazing. She's the greatest person in the world. I'm, I'm not promising the, her the world or anything like that. Yeah. I'm just being honest. But like, as much as I'm in love with her, like I'm literally, I probably have never loved anybody else as much as I love this girl. Wow. Like I was talking to my first love about her for the last <laughs> two days. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. And like, I would, I probably would still uh, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I can't say that I would be, uh, somebody who wouldn't be susceptible, uh, susceptible to like temptation or anything like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, so I talk in the song about how, uh, no matter how much love I get, I lust for more flesh. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like there, there's a, there's, uh, a, a story out there about feeding, you know what I'm saying? I think it's a Amer- uh, Native American, um, like, tale or something like that about mm. like there's two different wolves that everybody has inside of them and you either feed the good wolf and you feed the bad wolf mm-hmm. and like sometimes you feed the bad wolf right and right. that's what kills you you know what i'm saying right right yeah no i like i, I get it yeah you no know, like yeah. sometimes i'll let my demons get the best of me and i'll go out and i say in the song uh you know like no i, I like to binge you know what i'm saying binge for consumption right right and like I'm on the verge of destruction, then for consumption. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, those things are real. I'm not, I, I didn't just like rhyme a bunch of words together. You know what I'm saying? It's like, right. No, I, I, I know. There are some things I that mean, I wish man. not to share with the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, I right. have a song called You Wouldn't Believe Me If I Told You. And <laughs> there, there was something that happened. Like, I really probably am a real fucking psycho, well, bro. You, you, you gotta, you gotta watch it, dude. Like I'm a real fucking problem <laughs> oh, in this all world. Right, all right, but we got to you know. truth. We gotta we gotta let you go because you keep swearing, and we gotta wrap up the segment anyway. Oh, I'm so I'm so sorry, Doc. I forgot. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's all right. I caught it, but but we do we do need to go. So we're gonna we're gonna hit this track, monsters. I'm I'm really uh, eager to share this with everybody, and uh, keep up the great. Hey work. man, thank you so much. I apologize, man. No, I apologize no. so much for the the cursing and stuff, man. No, no worries. I, I know it was an accident, but uh, it's I'm, all. I've been doing internet radio for the last, <laughs> like you know, everybody's on internet radio these days. So I I forgot we was on clear. Channel. Yeah, yeah, no, that's all right. Don't, don't don't worry about it. But uh and we will have you back, but uh so but like I said, you've been very generous with your time and uh I can't wait to I see would, that uh, like, video. Yeah, would, uh let's talk more later. I know you got to get back to the show. Thank you so much for the opportunity, man. Yep. Um hit, hit me later whenever you got some time and we'll talk about uh I'll let you know when I ordered those garments so that you can be expecting them. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, no, we're looking forward to that. Thank you. All right, brother. Cool. All, right, all right, thank you so much, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah. All right, Truth. All right, bye-bye. All right, so Truth leaves us, and uh, we're going to listen to this track. Uh, this is uh, this is called Monsters. Work 
And in my dreams, they attack me when I sleep. They appear in many forms, trying to trap me in deceit. Every time they speak, I know it's a lie. I gotta clear my mind. They try to convince me that I've already hit my peak, or I'll never rise to the occasion. Like I'll never reach my destination. I see through the manipulation. They know what I crave. I'm addicted to destruction, vengeful consumption. I'm always on the verge of erupting. The clock's ticking. I'm strapped with explosives. I'm becoming more vexed. I'm trying to conceal this corrupted cerebral cortex. No matter how much love I get, I lust for more flesh. They want all of my focus. They always trying to hold me back when I'm trying to progress. How do I escape these voices? They're trying to bury me alive. They're in desperate need of the doctor, but they're stuck with high dares.